What's up guys, Dr. Aaron Stairs here from the Performance Republic. I'm here hanging out in the clinic in San Antonio. And today we are going over footwear for training. So there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to what type of footwear should you be wearing when you're training, on your runs, on a speed day, or if you're in the gym. Do you need different types of shoes? And then if so, what kind of shoes do you need? We're gonna kind of answer all of these things and really kind of debunk some of the myths around footwear and some of the kind of the nuances that really don't matter all that much. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so first tip that we have for you on, on footwear is really just choosing a shoe specific for the activity that you're doing, right? So you definitely want to have a training shoe for the gym, um, a running specific shoe, um, and then maybe one other pair for, you know, any other activity that you're doing, right? If you trail run once a week, then you may want some trail run specific shoes. If you are doing, you know, power lifting, then you want some power lifting shoes. Right? Everyone's gonna be a little bit different on the activities that they do when they're cross training or when they're not running. So you just wanna make sure that you have a shoe that fits the specific activity that you're doing. So you wanna make sure that when you're picking a shoe, you get the right fit also, uh, you know, you want to you want to look at comfort more than anything else. Everyone's going to be a little bit different. Obviously, you've got different types of shoes, especially when it comes to running. You've got minimal shoes. You've got those kind of zero drops. The drop can be a little bit different on different shoes and things like that. Pronation control, the amount of kind of you know, padding that you have on there. Also, there's all these different factors. So you definitely just want to go to a store specifically for running shoes or for you know training. That way, you can get fitted for something that's comfortable. And we kind, of we kind of touched on it already. Um, you know, if you are, you know, running more frequently and you have different types of runs that you go on, then you may want to switch up your shoes for those, right? So for everyday running shoes, um, you know, you want a kind of a versatile option. It's, it's, it's a versatile option for an everyday running shoe for, for everything that you do. It's really durable. Um, you know, if you get something a little bit more lightweight, that might be a little bit better uh, for the comfort of your feet whenever you're doing something that's a little faster workout or doing a sprint workout. Um, and then obviously if you're going on trail runs and you have trail specific shoes, um, you know, obviously go for a pair of those. Now, from a pricing standpoint, you know, a good running shoe is going to take you back anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks. Um, you know, again, that's just for the quality of the shoe. Um, there is a very big difference. You know, we've, we've known a lot of people who've worked at New Balance and we've seen the difference between like New Balance shoes when they're in the 50 to $60 range versus the 100 to 120. You know, New Balance specifically, they, they tier their shoes um, based on price for quality. So you are paying for something better. It's not just an upsell. So again, um, you know, when it comes to running, knowing kind of the lingo when it comes to, you know, the types of qualities in a running shoe, right? There's the stack height, which is basically the amount of material between your foot and the ground, um, you know, the, the heel to toe drop, basically describing, you know, the amount of material underneath the heel and then the amount in the forefoot, um, you know, it kind of tells you how much you've, how much difference you've got there. Um, and then also you're looking at something called pronation control. Um, basically, it's a stability shoe. It gives you a little bit more padding on the inside of your foot so you don't cave down into this pronation of your ankle, which can cause a lot of injuries around the ankle. Now, with all that lingo being said, let's just get down to the nitty gritty of this, right? There's, there's a lot going on when it comes to pay, paying for running shoes, and there's a lot of people out there who tell you a bunch of different things like pronation control matters, zero drops are, are, are the shit, they're the ones that you need, um, you know, or, or stack high, you need more cushion in your shoe. At the end of the day, it does not matter when it comes to improving performance. So let's just kind of delineate that for a second, because the, the type of shoe that you wear is going to make your foot more comfortable while you're running and it can help decrease the amount of pain or soreness that you have in your feet. But let's get this straight, footwear is gonna have a negligible effect on performance. Your body is the one that's performing, not your shoe. Your shoe's gonna make it more comfortable and obviously you're gonna perform better when you're not in pain and you're not sore because of your shoes. That's the only factor that shoes affect. They don't affect performance. 
And if the studies that show that they do uh, improve performance, it's a negligible amount. It's not a clinically significant amount of improvement to warrant them being called performance shoes. Okay, so get something that is comfortable for you and matches the activity that you're doing. That's literally all you need to know when it comes to footwear. Okay, when it comes to buying a good shoe for you. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments about this, about, oh no, well I just spent $200 on these shoes, they improve performance. Okay, maybe they do, but you know, there's way better and more effective ways for you to improve your performance, right? Are you, train you cross-training a couple times a week? Are you on a solid running program? Are you eating the right things? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you doing your mobility work, right? There's so many other factors that contribute high percentage gains and improvement rather than shoes that may give you a 1% difference at most. So take that into consideration next time you go into the store to, to buy new shoes, okay? Um, just know that they are improving the comfort levels and they're maybe decreasing the amount of pain and soreness that you're getting in your feet, but they are not improving performance, okay? And touching on a little deeper on the uh, pronation piece because we know that you know over pronation and uncontrolled pronation when you're running is going to cause a lot of injuries. Um, knowing that that is the case, you do have an option of a pronation control shoe, but I like to call that a, a big band aid, right? Ultimately, if you know that you pronate, you need to work on it through a specific exercise and manual therapy program. Um, you know, that's ultimately what's going to improve things in the long run, not a pronation control shoe that just stops you from going in there. It doesn't teach your body to get stronger because then as soon as you stop using those pronation control shoes, your pronation is actually going to be worse. So just know that if you are going with pronation control, that's fine in the short term, as long as you're also working on improving the strength and stability of your ankle so that you're not over pronating. Okay. Hopefully that gives you guys a, a good little uh, overview of, of footwear when it comes to running and training. Um, if you have any questions on that, feel free to uh, reach out to me at any point. Uh, you can reach out to me to Aaron at theperformancerepublic.com or you can go to my website www.theperformancerepublic.com to, to send me a message. Um, you can also contact us at the clinic anytime, 210-338-0073. Thanks guys, this is the Fitting In Podcast and uh, I'm your host, Dr. Aaron Stairs. Thanks for joining us today and we'll catch you next week.